The Beatles. Yellow Submarine. Hello and welcome to I Can't Believe It's Not The Mouse, the podcast all about animated movies not made by Disney. I'm your host, Octaviano Macias, and today we're talking about The Beatles. Specifically, their animated and best feature, Yellow Submarine. Now, what's it about? I'm sure a lot of you have heard about this movie. I'm sure a lot of you have maybe even seen this movie. Well, if you need a refresher or you just never heard about it before, Yellow Submarine is basically a very simple movie. Not in a bad way. It it runs on a very simple premise and it kind of has to. Essentially, the movie is about this place called Pepperland that gets overrun by these evil creatures named the Blue Meanies. And the defenders of this place, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, which if you're Beatles fans, you already kind of know this. They're essentially like the Beatles. And here there are just different people who look like the Beatles. In real life, there was like an alternate uh, name for the band, an alter ego of sorts. I'm, I'm a little hazy on the details on it. I know it had it was just like, okay, here's like a name change if necessary, or maybe it was just for fun. I don't know. Point is that in the movie, they're pretty much like the defenders of this Pepperland place. So Pepperland is defended by them, but the Blue Meanies come in and trap them in a like bubble. Uh, they overrun the place, and the only person who manages to survive is this uh, general character who basically takes the Yellow Submarine of the title to go find some heroes. He finds Ringo, who then leads him to the rest of the Beatles, and they go on this journey to go back to Pepperland. Along the way, they meet this little character called um, Jeremy, uh, who's also referred as the, uh, referred to as the Boob. He's kind of a weird character. I know at one point they sing that he's the Nowhere Man. They get back to they get back to Pepperland. They sing. They free the people. The Blue Meanies are then changed into good people. And that's the end of the movie. It's a very simple premise. Honestly, the story is really just there just to excuse setups to musical numbers, to weird visuals, to jokes, to philosophies, just all kinds of things. It's all, like the characters say, it's all in the mind, you know? And that's kind of what the whole movie is. In a way, it's kind of like Fantasia, only with a story instead of just a a guy introducing you to each short and what they're about. It's just, here's a bunch of music, here's visuals to go along with the music, uh, here's a story that kind of connects it all together, even though it's all very loose and there you go that's your whole movie and yeah it, it's a classic it's, it's it's a good really good movie uh, it, it's it's well beloved for a good reason it's not just a whole thing where it's like oh it's the beatles it's good music so we have to love it no this is a very well beloved movie for a lot of people beatles fans or not of course if you're a beatles fan it helps but it's not really necessary it's a fun little story even if you don't uh, know the beatles the, vi- the visuals are always great it's very trippy of course if you're into drugs this is gonna be one of the most fun movies you probably watch but yeah it's just here's the beatles here's them doing random stuff it's all in the guise of guys of um trying to um save people but realistically they're just there for the music, which you can't complain. This has, of course, earned its place in history as one of the most iconic um, animated features, especially one that's not made by Disney. Buda is very important for a lot of people. Uh, former head of Pixar, and I know he's kind of disgraced, but it is important to at least acknowledge it. Consider this to be one of the one of the great animated films that really showcase that yes, animation can be more than just a kid's thing. It could be for adults. It could be for people. It, like it can make you think more about what you can bring to the animation field and that's really where this movie does shine is that it, it doesn't feel like your typical animated movie it's very much an art house piece but it's also fun for for you if you're, you're not into that kind of stuff just because the characters do make a lot of jokes it's a lot of puns they, they do bring about a, certain ideas that can make you think about it a little bit but again then there's the music which just goes beautifully with a lot of the uh, animation in this the animation at first glance looks very simple very cheap and to be fair it it kind of is but it's one of those cases where it's like the people making this knew exactly what to do with their animation because a lot of it is just really well done it's uh, like like i said it does look cheap but then when you see it in motion then when you see how it plays off the music how it contrasts how some of the jokes go it, it just really 
well done because uh, some of the, the humor, some of the music would not work if it was done with a lot cleaner and sleeker animation, you know? It, it is really much something where they t- fully took advantage of what they were using and how they were going about it. A lot of a lot of the animation at first glance may look like something like, okay, this is just like, um, I don't want to say stick figures, um, like, like cut-out drawings. It looks kind of like cut- cut-out drawings, kind of like um, if you've seen South Park, it's kind of like that. More detailed than South Park, of course, but it, like, you know, that's what it kind of comes off as at first, but you, you quickly realize, like, okay, there's kind of a reason why it has to be like that. Aside from this being a very weird movie, so it, it keeps you in that feel that, yes, this is going to be a weird, trippy time. But again, it, it just helps in creating the world and the music and everything about it. It's just very simple, very peaceful. You just feel the love in it. And I, I know that sounds kind of cheesy, but once you see the movie, you, you'll kind of know what I mean, because this is, this is a movie that feels very much like a hippie piece. And, and in, in the best way as possible, of course, it's the Beatles, so you have a lot of love all that stuff and yeah it's a very solid time I I, I honestly don't even mind that the story is very simple because I know a lot of people will complain about this one just because oh look um, it's a very basic story a lot of times they're kind of messing around like when they first get into the yellow submarine voyaging around they go from one song to the next song to the next song right away and a lot of it just kind of doesn't really have to do much with the story it's just kind of like okay I get that they're passing through you know they're trying to journey back um, to Pepper land not home um but why are we seeing all this stuff when we could just get to the part where they're there or at least create some struggles which they do showcase some struggles like they encounter strange creatures that um make the journey all that much harder but again you don't mind because that's kind of not the point uh much like fantasia it really is just like okay what can we do to showcase the music in this movie to um contrast with what you're what you're saying can we create visuals of that song perfectly it's it's pretty much like a music video uh this was before music videos were really a thing so you can definitely see how music videos would have taken inspiration from this movie so again that's part of why it's so important but yeah the story is very much just taking a backseat i mean even by the time they get to pepperland it's like okay song after song after song and it's kind of played off as like okay they're taking down each of the the enemies that that's coming their way. They just saved the Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club plan. Well, now they're have to take on this guy again. And now we've fully converted the Blue Mini, so let's sing and show our love. And very simple, very weird. But it's great. I mean, I, I really can't complain about this movie being the way it is when it's just so fun, so entertaining, so pretty, and it's just a reminder of what movies can be when you're not so focused on creating a, a rule book of what movies should be. Because realistically, movies, like like the, the name states, it's motion pictures, it's moving pictures. So... With, with that, you know, you got a lot of pictures that aren't always as clear as you would imagine, like whether it's drawings, whether it's uh, portraits that people make or, or whatever, you, you always get a sense that each picture has their own little thing going on. Sometimes there's a clear story going on, sometimes there's a clear story going on, but sometimes it's just about how it makes you feel. And the Beatles, the, the Beatles Yellow Submarine is very much a, a, a thing where it's like, okay, this is about how you feel. Not so much how much you think, it's just an experience that you just have to see and feel at that moment. You just have to be there, you know? That's what I'm trying to say. I I know I'm kind of going around here, but that's my general point. You have to see this movie just to feel it and just to understand that, yeah, the story is taking back back seat, but that's not the point. The movie is still working because of what it's doing right. And of course, with it being the Beatles, you just know that the music is going to be great. Whether it's All You Need Is Love, When I'm 64... All Together Now, Nowhere Man, Yellow Submarine, of course, as the title suggests, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, shoot, I'm, I'm blanking out on some of these, Lucy in the Sky of Diamonds, I don't have to list all these songs, but you know, it's all just really solid stuff, it's just, I, I know I know people are probably gonna say, like, oh, well, aren't you kind of a hypocrite, because there's certain movies where I'm like, yeah, the song's great, the movie sucks, though, like, Chicken Little, uh, the Disney animated movie, great soundtrack, horrible movie, what was the name of that movie, um, Bohemian Rhapsody, which is the movie about Queen, the live action movie, uh, not one I'm gonna talk about on here, but that one, yeah, it has a lot of great Queen songs, but it's horrible, and that's mostly because it's a very generic, by the numbers, biopic, like, yeah, I love the songs, I ain't gonna watch it for that, the, the, the Yellow Submarine, yeah, I could just listen to the soundtrack, 
But at the very least, it's got a good movie to go along with it. That's really what it comes down to. It's just that aside from having great songs, you have great music, great animation, great characters, a lot of funny jokes, a lot of um, weird stuff that makes you think. It's just a very satisfying movie to watch beyond just the music. The music is, of course, the main the main thing that makes it work, but it's not the only thing, and that's what matters. Now, of course, the question is, is this more for adults than it is for kids? Considering that many who consider it a landmark uh, movie and animation view it as something more for an older audience, and I say you can watch it as a kid. It's not gonna, it's not gonna suck as a kid. I mean, technically, I first saw it when I was in my teens. I saw it in my high school math class. Wherever you are out there, um, Mr. Favela, just want to say, yeah, this was a great movie. Thank you for introducing it to to me. I mean, it was fun watching it. Just yeah. But, yeah, this is a movie that I can see that, yeah, kids can enjoy it. I mean, of course, they're going to like the songs. Some of the jokes might go past their head, um, you know, yeah, pretty much go over your heads. Uh, some of the more um, philosophical, psychedelic stuff might not make a lot of sense. But at the very least, they will have a good time with the music. And I feel like with that, yeah, you can watch it as a kid. But, of course, it is going to make a lot more sense as an, as an adult. And in that way, I'm like, okay, yeah, this is kind of more of an adult feature, but not in the sense that kids can't watch it, just in a way that adults will be the ones who appreciate it. And I feel like that's something that a lot of people need to understand about animation going forward is that there are those movies that, yes, kids can watch it, but adults will be the ones who appreciate it. And it's not like it's even that rare. I mean, Pixar regularly does this stuff. Like, like a movie like Soul or Up, I feel, is going to be more appreciated by adults than it would be for kids. Ratatouille another one um not that i want to go all in on disney products right now but just to get you an idea that yeah this is a normal and it's kind of it's kind of annoying that so many have that stigma against animation that they're like okay well unless it's actually swearing unless they're actually saying adult words or whatever they want to wherever they want to move the goalpost they're like oh that's the only way that it would be for adults you have to see the blood you have to see these characters swearing you have to see some nudity and it's like you see that's why you get those animated movies that and not to diss them really because i know there are some good that there are and there are some bad but you get those animated movies that are like okay we're trying to make this for adults how do we do that oh we're gonna have the characters swearing like crazy we're gonna have them talking about sex and it's just like guys come on not everything for adults is like that i mean when it comes to live action movies there's a lot of live action movies classic ones or new ones that are considered for adults like something like citizen kane where no one's expecting um Charles Foster Kane to come in and just say fuck all over the place to consider it an adult movie. They already do consider it an adult movie, but kids are going to watch it. I mean, I saw that one when I was nine and I was perfectly fine with it. Of course, I learned to appreciate it more as an elder viewer, but as a kid, I could still watch it. So I feel it's weird whenever people do that with a lot of movies. And Yellow Submarine is definitely one of those where it's like, yeah, kids can watch it and kids can enjoy it. The adults will appreciate it more. And yeah, this is a perfect example of how animation could be for adults because a lot of it is based on how you feel rather than what you're seeing rather than just the story, which not, not, not that those things are bad, but when it comes to like, you know, movies that make you feel, make you think, that's usually more for an older audience in the, in the sense that uh, you better understand those things. Like, of course, kids can feel laughter, sadness, all that stuff, but it's only until you're an adult, and even then, not even always, where you start to realize and understand why exactly you feel the way you do about certain things, and that's just something that is important to me uh, when it comes to animation and how animation needs to grow and how people need to start looking at animation beyond just being silly drawings or silly computer graphics or silly figures, whatever, to feel like um, their opinion is justified on these things. But of course, if you're watching this, you might be aware that I haven't touched on a lot of behind the scenes stuff. And that's not because I don't think there's anything interesting there. It's that I only know some of the stuff. I haven't gone into too deep on this, unfortunately. I know that apparently George Harrison's voice in the movie, because none of the Beatles are actually voiced by, by the actual Beatles unless they're singing. The Beatles do appear at the end just to feel, because uh, it was like a contractual ab obligation. But when it came to the voice acting, none of them really did it. I, I, I remember hearing something about how Ringo apparently wished that, that he had known the movie would have been good that way he would have come in and actually offered his voice because apparently they were just like ah, we don't care we, we weren't really satisfied with the other movies or at least one of the other movies but um 
at least one of them, like uh, the guy who was George, halfway through had to be replaced by the guy who was voicing Ringo because apparently something about how he was a spy. Or, I, I, I don't know. It's a weird story. Like apparently he was a spy or a traitor or something, a, pi- a spy or a traitor or something. And I'm just like, that's a wild story, but interesting, interesting. I'm, I'm not going to interesting. But yeah, I haven't gotten into too much of the back behind the scenes stuff on this one because I don't know enough to really say what would make it interesting. I know it was, of course, the whole contractual thing. Um, Like I said, with the voice acting. I know for a while, um, one of the songs was apparently cut out of the U.S. release. Um, The Hey Bull Dog song, I I believe it was. But there is something really interesting about the, the, the Yellow Submarine. Now, technically, this is me going really into something from Disney. But, hey, it never happened. So, technically, I'm not talking about Disney. Still, though. Uh... Yellow Submarine was actually set to be remade by Disney around the 2010s. And I remember hearing about this. It was basically Robert Zemeckis' um, company. Like, if you remember, he, he was doing a, a, a lot of uh, motion capture movies like Polar Express, Beowulf, uh, A Christmas Carol, and Mars Needs Mom. Which, that movie tanking was apparently why this thing never got made. Because it tanked the whole company. But... They were doing a remake of the Yellow Submarine, and footage of that has actually started leaking out online, where you actually see some of the animation, some of the designs. The Beatles, I feel, weren't too ba- badly designed, but the, the when it came to char- characters like the Blue Minis, those were much worse. Like it was kind of like, okay, some of these you're going kind of caricature like, which is fine when it comes to motion capture, but then you have the Blue Minis where you're trying to make it look more like real people, and that's where motion capture is creepy. But yeah, they were remaking the Yellow Submarine. Again, you can find a lot of the stuff. Jeremy looks really creepy in this movie. He almost looks like an actual tit. Just because I I guess they're like, well, they called him the boob, so he should look like a boob. But yeah, that's one of those where I'm like, I'm kind of glad that we didn't get it. But then when I started seeing footage of it, uh, because of course it's leaked out over the years, I'm like, I kind of wish we had gotten the Yellow Submarine remake. Now, granted, it probably would have been a nightmare to look at, but then you see some of the stuff like when, when they do, um, uh, like the opening sequence, uh, the scene where um, Ringo is is um, running from the Yellow Submarine, that kind of stuff. We're all very amazing sequences to look at. Now, granted, those are all just storyboards, so that's probably why it looked amazing. Once it got into CG, it probably wouldn't have looked amazing, but it, it still was interesting. I mean, my only thing was that looking at it, if it, it kind of reminded me of the, the live-action Disney remakes where we're kind of trying to honor the the version that we're remaking, but we're also adding stuff that's kind of unnecessary because it felt like they were trying to make it a bit more story heavy uh, based on the clips. I don't know how it would have actually turned out, but based on the clips, like with how they, they did the intro and the, the Ringo thing, it, it kind of felt like they were trying to add in more of like, okay, let's try to make some sense. We're still going to have some of the weird stuff that you guys like, but we get that modern audiences really need stuff to make sense. So we're going to have it kind of flow from scene to scene with a story. And I'm like, I don't know if that would have worked. I don't think it would have. The visuals certainly are interesting. And if you can find the Yellow Submarine remake, which shouldn't be that hard, but just look up like Yellow, Yellow Submarine remake uh, leak clips or whatever, you'll probably find them. I know there was like at one point like 15 minutes worth of stuff that was released. And yeah, it, it's very satisfying. It's the kind of stuff that I'm like, I would have liked to see in that. But I probably also wouldn't have liked to have seen it. I don't know. Some of the stuff was horrifying. But yeah, it, it was interesting. And in a, in a way, it would have been interesting to compare it to the the original movie, which is a, a masterpiece. It's one of the best movies that I've seen for this show so far. It is a, a very well-animated movie, even if it doesn't look like it. The way they co- contrast the music with the, the drawings is all great. It's all solid. I, I really enjoy it. Uh, the music, of course, it's the Beatles. Why wouldn't you love it? Honestly, go watch it. It's definitely a fun time. I I don't think it's available on much streaming services, but you should be able to find the Blu-ray pretty easily. And they got the neat stuff in that, so it's definitely worth 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 a watch. Um, if you're hesitant because it looks um, the drawings look bad, or because you're not a big fan of the Beatles, I would say just open your mind a little bit, and you'll you'll find yourself having a good time. It's definitely a trippy fun time. Um, I, I legally I shouldn't say. That you should watch this high, but kind of you should watch it high if you're into that kind of stuff. So long as as it's illegal drugs, do legal drugs and get high and watch this movie. I don't do that. I imagine I probably would love it more if I did, but just an idea. I'm not going to 
I'm not going to say much more than that. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a fun time. Just go watch The Yellow Submarine. It's it's a positive, fun movie. Thank you for listening to this. This has been Octaviano Macias, host of I Can't Believe It's Not the Mouse. If you enjoyed it, please support me on Patreon. That's www.patreon.com slash sidecams. S-A-I-C-A-M-S. www.patreon.com slash sidecams. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you next time. But first for the originals. We are the originals. We're